Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of the Fusion Fall Retro playthrough. A little bit of a tone shift from last time. Um, we're here standing in the sunny cul-de-sac when at the end of the last part we were kind of threatened with fighting Fuse for the final time. Uh, <laughs> and everything was super serious and, and crazy, but... Uh, we can't fight Fuse right now, or we can. We can we can certainly fight Fuse right now, but I don't want to because um, if you remember back in the beginning of the uh, playthrough episode, maybe like eight or nine ish around there, uh, we had to pick our guides, and um, you guys all voted uh, double D one, but there were still three guides left unchosen, and of course, what would have happened if we were to chose uh, you know those guides? So we got to go through and do the rest of the guide missions that we didn't quite get to this time. I am wearing. Uh, the, the, uh, what's this called again? The, uh, the, the clockwork set. Um, back from way in the beginning. Again, if you remember some of the first episodes of the playthrough, you remember when we got this. Um, and I figured it would be a nice, uh, kind of shift back. Because we are pretty much, like, turning the clocks back almost. Where we're going all the way back to the beginning of the game. Doing some missions in the early levels. And, um, and then, yeah, we're gonna be going through, uh, pretty much the game again. But, uh, a lot shorter this time. Because we're gonna be doing one guide mission set at a time. Anyway, uh, for our nanos today, uh, alongside with the clockwork set and the lightning gun, as you see, and the lightning sword that I have as well, um, we're kind of going back to the basics, back to the beginning. So I feel like this nano suggestion by Zenv is perfect because they say we should do Buttercup number two and Eddie to come full circle with the series. And I agree. I agree. So that's exactly what we did. Um, <laughs> I went with Buttercup number two and Eddie. Buttercup kind of useless um, because I'm level 36, so it's not like Scavenge is going to be... Uh, worthwhile. We might want to change Buttercup's power now, um, but I'm not too sure um, if I want to do that one right now. Eh, why not? Let's do it. Let's do it. We can change. Since we're level 36, we really don't have any need for scavenge anymore. So I don't think I've ever show. Oh yeah, I did. I did show off how to do this in, in the very beginning because we had to change Buttercup's powers initially from a stun to a scavenge, but now we're going full circle and it's changing it from a scavenge to a stun. So we got Misfire back again. Again, we really don't need a scavenge because we're max level, so it's not like it matters. Um, and now we have to change our guide as well because our guide currently is still, does it say? Our guide is still Ed. So in order to um, change our guide, you got to go to a guide changer. Or you can go talk to Ed himself or talk to Dexter or Ben or Mojo Jojo. But of course, um, they're a bit far away other than Ed. So just go to the guide changer. Um, when I did the poll, when I did the vote, Dexter had the second most votes, Ed had the most votes, Dexter, it went Ed, Dexter, Ben, and Mojo, so that's going to be the order that we do these, so Dexter's the next one, we're going to change your guide to Dexter, are you sure you want to change your guide to Dexter, remember, once you change your guides, you will no longer be able to equip your current guide items, and any guide items that you currently have equipped will no longer be functional. We've changed our guide to Dexter, Dexter will now greet us whenever we enter the game, Dexter has now sent us an email for a uh, thing that we'll read. And now, if you notice, if we go in our bank, there are a lot of red things that we can't wear anymore. And we can't even use these. We can't even use the new wrist rockets we got. So that's a feature I really don't like about this game, is that once you change your guide, all guide items that you have are no longer useful. You can't use them. You can't equip them. Um, they, they become unequipped until you switch back. So if we were to go switch back to Ed, all of those things would be usable for us again. I don't really like that. Um, obviously it's, it's kind of weird to go through all the trouble of collecting all these things and then you can't use them anymore, but, oh well, that's how it is. Um, also, since we're here, we might as well grab a plank cover board. Actually, we already did the plank cover board. Let's get the cardboard box this time. We're gonna ride around in the cardboard box. I love this one. <laughs> you have the little, like, paper towel roll as the handle. Anyway, so what we have to do. Dexter, now that we are now a new Dexter guide recruit, he says, Greetings, I hope this email finds you well and that you are continuing to fight the good fight. Oh, uh, we are fighting more than just the good fight, Dexter. Ever since Fuse invaded, many superheroes have disappeared. I want to investigate the strange phenomenon. Speak with Blossom at the kids next door treehouse to see if she can help. Okay. We can absolutely do that. Head on back to Blossom. So, these missions are going to be a bit... These episodes might be a bit weirdly paced compared to the other ones, or maybe not weirdly paced, but differently paced. Um, simply because the guide missions are all sequential, so you have to do one to unlock the next one, and so on and so forth. Um, so it's not like we're going to be doing like four missions at once and get them all done real quick. So I don't really know how long it's going to take to do these things, but we are going to find out. And I'm going to try, if it's like a timed mission or something, I'm going to try to not use my vehicle, because I know they are super fast. So I will probably uh, use number two as much as I can. But here's Blossom. Also, Blossom got a new texture model. I kind of, Or not a new model. Got a new texture. I, uh, I'm pretty sure I brought that up when we talked to her couple parts ago but 
Blossom Battle. Dexter says he wants me to help you out on a special mission. Well, I need to make sure that you know how to handle yourself. Can you show me what you've got? Okay, so we have to defeat nine Ultra Magno Beetles. Greetings, Blossom has agreed to help me with a special mission. I want you to work with her on it. She's going to test your battle skills, so show her that you have the right stuff. I will contact you again soon. Okay. Um, so Ultra Magno Beetles are over here. I remember this. I think we'll probably one-shot them, considering we're level 36, but I am using a level 1 gun. Um, I think I've talked about this before, but let's see if it, uh, my hypothesis is true. Okay, we two-shot them. So combat in Fusion Fall is not really based on your weapon. Um, if you were, if you didn't have a bigger weapon, let's let's find out. Well, let's test out what would happen if I had like this weapon here. Yeah, we do the same damage, essentially. I think it would probably be more of a consistent two-shotter. But combat in Fusion Fall is more based on the level difference that you have. Oh, I feel kind of bad. I'm taking uh, monsters from this guy who's probably trying to do level four missions. All right, he's a Wilt Nano, so he can't be level four. Maybe he's like level six or something. Um, oh, an egg. I wonder what I can find in here. I don't know what the drops are for the Sector V egg. Bank Robber Mask. Okay, I guess they're like the future the the future rare items. Or the future ultra rare items. Which is kind of neat. But as I was saying, uh, Combat and Fusion Fall, again, I mentioned this a couple of times before. Um, but it's based more on like the level difference than your weapon or armor. Which is why fighting monsters that are... Uh, a lot harder than you is is a bit more tricky than just equipping the right weapon and armor. And Blossom says, "Good, I've seen you've been through training." Okay, so we got to go talk to Blossom now. Are you there? You've you're done, so come back and see me. It's really nice to be back here in Sector V. Reminds me of a simpler time <laughs> before the world. I guess the world was always at uh, in danger, you know, being we're at war and all. Can I make it up top here? I really just can. <laughs> That's kind of funny how the speed from the box gets me all the way up to the top. I guess that's another way to climb the treehouse if you if you always struggle with that part. Even though that's like the easiest part of climbing the treehouse. You made short work of those Ultra Magnum beetles. I guess you're pretty tough. Are you ready to crack the case of the missing superheroes? Good work. Dexter reports that superheroes all over the world have been disappearing. We need to get work together to see if we can get to the bottom of the mystery. And I'm pretty sure Dexter keeps emailing you. Yeah. So I'm going to try to read the emails as much as I can. I know I wasn't very good about doing that with Double D. So I'm going to try to read the emails for the other ones. Because I think there are some some gems in here once in a while. Blossom told me you impressed her with your fighting skills. That is good. Now I want you to check in with her about the missing heroes. I heard she has a lead regarding my favorite hero of all time, Major Glory. I remember Major Glory. I hear Dexter is trying to crack down or track down some missing superheroes. Major Glory's last known location was at the Career Day event in Pokeyokes Junior High. Okay. Ever since this war with Fuse began, many of the world's greatest superheroes have gone missing, including my favorite, Major Glory. I want to investigate the strangest appearances. Blossom has agreed to help us on our search. Good luck. We also got this cool um, part to our first guide mission set for Dexter, the dodgeball armor engine. I'm going to put that on because I think it looks a lot cooler on this uh, set rather than the, the swords. But it's like the dodgeball exosuit armor from that one episode. But let's head on over to Pokey Oaks. Oh, and it's, it feels so weird to be back. We can all obviously just run through these Caterplugs and they're not going to attack us because they're like, oh, he's level 36. We don't want to deal with him. We don't want to mess with them. That's also something that has to do with combat is the level difference between you and the enemy. It will determine whether or not they target you um, or not because obviously you can just... They don't want to attack someone that they can't win against. <laughs> so these guys will attack us because there's four of them. But normally if you run through like one or so, they don't try to gang up on you or they won't try to attack you. We've made it to Pokey Oaks Junior High. We have to look for clues. I don't know what kind of clues we have to look for. I'm going to use number two and kind of platform around. You just have to hop over the middle there, and then you're all set. And it looks like this clue is right here. It is a... What is it? I'm a danger screen still on. Pokey Oaks Rock. <laughs> You found Major Glory's Justice Friends Day Planner. Let's look at his schedule. Okay. So it looks like Major Glory was last seen here in Pokey Oaks Junior High. He dropped his uh, he dropped his day planner. So in order for us to figure out where he's going, what he's doing, we're gonna have to bring it to Blossom. I guess we can't read it to her over the Nanocom voice thing. We kind of have to go and talk to her ourselves. Which, oh well, it's fine. <laughs> it's fine. It's okay. That's another thing. Uh, a lot of the communications in the game, it's like, do, do you really need to? Do we really have to go talk to you in person? Can't you just call me? Can't we just communicate over the phone? 
but that's okay. I understand why, like, they have you go talk to, to people. Because you had to turn in missions and stuff, and you gotta do other things. So, that's fine. We'll be good. Let's go talk to Blossom and find out what Major Glory is doing. You can also just climb the treehouse with these vehicles so easily. I just didn't even know that before. There's also a vehicle vendor here. I should check it out. What is that noise? Did I just get an email? I did. Okay. I'm gonna close that tab so you no longer hear those noises. I'm sorry if you heard that. It might not have come through the speaker. So, if it didn't come through the speaker... Um, that might be a bit awkward, but I just got, like, an email notification. Interesting that you found Major Glory's day planner in Pokey Oaks. Looks like he was going on a mission to the Darklands when he disappeared. A mission to the Darklands? We were just there! Nice work at Pokey Oaks. Listen, you can't be walking around in those clunky shoes. Take these, they come straight from Dex Lab. Okay, I'll put them on if you want me to. I'm gonna try to slowly go through all the guide sets while I, while I do these missions. What does Dexter have to say? Because I know he's emailing me. Major Glory, the best superhero ever, seems to have disappeared during a mission to the Darklands. That area is very dangerous, but if you keep working with Blossom, she'll help you get prepared. Go see if she has any missions for you. I'll be in touch soon. Okay, well, I can just go to the Darklands if you want me to. Like, I am I am capable of fighting Fuse on my own. I am the master weapon, but that's fine. Sector Defender is the next one. So Major Glory went missing after you went to the Darklands? Well, that area is way dangerous. Help me take off Fuse's troops, and I'll try to get you prepared. There's going to be a lot of dialogue reading in this one, so if you don't like that, I apologize. But I want to try to go through all of these. You may already know this, but Blossom's sister Buttercup went missing not too long ago. She has, so she has a personal interest in missing superheroes. It's a touchy subject. Just do as she asks. I've sent her some cool Dex Labs gear for you. Yeah, these shoes are kind of sick. I'm not gonna lie. I like the purple. Um, the vehicle vendor for Sector V is over here, by the way, number nine five nine. I don't know what the reference for is for that, but there's like the candy hoverboard, the Tempest jet bike, you know, the standard, the standard ones. But we gotta go to Pokyokes, um, north now, so. Let's go and do that. <laughs> I don't actually know how long um, the parts will be um, now, because I really don't know like how long it's going to take to do all of these missions. I, I suppose the, the good thing is I don't really have a place to stop necessarily, so like I'm pro I'll probably just go as far as I want to, as far as I feel like is appropriate for an episode length, um, and then I'll stop, because uh, really the only place that I have to stop is like the end of the guide mission line, so... As long as I don't do that in one episode, and I doubt it, because these missions do take a little bit when it regards to, like, travel and stuff. Especially these ones, because there's really no way for us to monkey over here. We kind of just have to ride over here in our trusty cardboard box. We gotta go take out some ball pen meanies, it seems. Okay, the area is crawling with Fuse's baddies. Stay on your toes. Oh, you already know I'm gonna stay on my toes. I'm gonna take out Buttercup. I do damage. Can I one-shot someone if I Buttercup out? I can come very close if you saw the health bar in that one. We're going to get a lot of low-level gear now, too. <laughs> but having a nice stun on Buttercup is great. Uh, we need to take out ten of these guys. Okay. I have a I have a sword, so I can take out multiple amount at once. It's not like they do any damage to me, so you can kind of just run in the middle of them. Well, you made you made that look easy. I know. <laughs> I'm, level, I'm max level. Come on back so I can give you a reward. All right. Get some more dodgeball armor. Something I really like is the guide armor sets, which is why I, I really don't like that uh, you're kind of guide locked if you want to wear your specific, um, you know, stuff. Because, like, some of them have really cool, like, this backpack. I feel like this backpack would go well with a lot of other things. Um, a lot of other, like, purple touched, um, uh, like, armor sets and stuff. But obviously you can only wear them if your guide is Dexter. Which I guess isn't awful, like, unless it really only affects you if you want, if you're trying to wear, like, two different guide um, things at once, which obviously you can't do, but I like how I just jump through the treehouse very nonchalantly as well. Alright, Blossom, we're back. You seem to have what it takes to be a real hero. Only the bravest could defeat monsters in Pokéox North. <laughs> obviously, this is supposed to be, like, this is supposed to be, like, we're supposed to be level 5 when we do this, but, like, it's really funny reading it when we're, like, literally, like, about to beat Fuse it's himself. Amazing. He did great work out there. I think you might have what it takes to be a real superhero. In the meantime, take this Dex Labs armor's reward. It'll make you even tougher. Also, the guide missions are like some of the only missions I know that are like, hey, or take this reward. You know, not a lot of other missions do that. They don't mention the reward. It's kind of just given. Professor Utonium is conducting experiments on an unusual strain of fusion matter. Dexter wants us to collect some samples for him at Mandark's house. Okay. Well, uh, we can definitely do that. We can head on over to Genius Grove. 
I missed one Dexter email, but I feel like it, most of what I found is that most of these two emails, like Dexter normally sends you two emails, once before you accept the mission, once after. I say most of them are pretty much the same, so I guess it's not a big deal that I missed one. I need you to collect some fusion matter samples for Professor Utonium. He's conducting a critical study, so please bring them to him right away. By the way, you did a great job for Blossom earlier. Keep up the good work. Thanks, Dexter. And we got more dodgeball leggings, so we, we're kind of like a little cyborg guy. I kind of like this, honestly, because the... Uh, the the clockwork um like colors i think kind of go at least pretty well with uh, the robotic purple and uh and white legs so we're kind of like half cyborg half time jumper i like the glasses too the glasses are a nice touch um and here's some oh i guess we're gonna i was gonna see if we can get some like level early level gear there's a custard blaster a him mask okay so nothing too crazy nothing too special but we gotta go to land. Mandark's house again. Do some more platforming. That's some, something that I'm actually looking forward to is being able to do more platforming on uh, some of the lower level um, things. Obviously, I don't have um, like rocket nanos on my lineup right now, but it still be pretty cool. Especially because I was probably I'm probably a lot better at platforming than I was when I actually started this playthrough. Now, so it's really cool to see like a difference between the two um, of some kind, at least. But let's head on down I, I forgot how like the pathing of his monkey skyway works <laughs> i forgot that kind of takes you all the way over here and then you go down like this it has also been a while since we visited genius grove i believe we were probably like level 20 something we had to do mandark's secret crush or whatever mandark's fusion crush yeah here's our friends the fusion matter samples are located inside the infected zone area nearby if i remember correctly they're just on the ground yeah they are okay so it's not like the tech wings are going to be a big issue for us, so we can kind of just run through and grab these. Special goo one. Got it. This type of fusion matter expresses interesting properties at high temperatures. Okay. I believe it. I believe it. Here's a high level person. I see the fuse breaker. They're level 36 too. That's crazy. I didn't catch their name though. Special goo two. Great. Only one more sample to collect. Keep up the good work. Uh, it looks like it's up there somewhere. So not too bad, not too shabby. You just gotta platform. Oh man, I have so much... <laughs> Obviously, like, the later levels, I don't really have that much, like, nostalgia for. Just because I never really made it there as a kid. But, like, these early levels are just... I used to go through these early levels all the time. It used to be something that, like, I would always make new characters when I played. Um, I don't remember which one has the... This one does. I don't remember which side has, like, the, the platform that goes up. Okay, that one kind of knocked me around. I thought I could kind of be cheeky with it. I'm getting a bit rattled up. Okay, here we go. Up top here. Special goo three. There's really no goo here, but well done. Take my take the specimens to Professor Utonium near my old house. Blossom sent us an email too. I know you're helping Dexter, but when you're done, come see me. We got another problem. Oh, and tell the professor I say hi, okay? See, there's some cute character interaction that you don't really get with some of the missions, because not a lot of missions besides guide missions send you emails. I know that's not the case for every mission. I know there are certainly missions that send you emails that aren't guide missions, um, but guide missions always send you emails, so it's just another cute way to add some cool character dialogue. That was nice work at Mandark's house. You hope Dexter and the Professor, with more kids like you, Fuse won't stand a chance against us. Aw. Thanks for these samples. It will really help me in my research. Blossom has told me great things about you. She wasn't kidding. Here's some great gear Dexter wanted you to have. What did we get? Oh, the helmet. I don't know if I like the helmet. I'm gonna. I'm not gonna wear the helmet. I'm gonna keep the hat on because I don't think the helmet looks very good <laughs> on me. At least on my character. But now we have to go back to Sector V because, as we can see by our next email, Home Invaders. You need to speak with Blossom right away. There's a lot of fuse activity happening around her house in Pokeoak South. Could be trouble. Oh, and thanks for collecting those fusion matter samples for me. <laughs> Dex is always so nice. He's, I mean, to be fair, Double D's emails were always very nice as well. Honestly, I, I don't know about that. Double D's emails seemed kind of passive aggressive because he was like, ah. I guess it wasn't really his fault because Courage and Blue would kind of have you go do some uh, questionable things. <laughs> Instead of looking for the candy, like Blue would just have you go like, be like, eh, fine, go do something. And then Courage, I remember Courage like had you go look for his bone and stuff. Um, which is like just not even what you're supposed to be doing. But Dexter's always so very nice thanking you and stuff <laughs> for all that you've done. Did we get anything else from that? I don't think we got, no, we didn't fight any monsters, so we wouldn't have gotten anything. I'm going to put these down here. 
Thank you for reminding me I could stack these, by the way. I completely forgot. I didn't mention that last episode. <laughs> I'm going to kind of keep these things up here. I already have a bank robber mask, so I'm going to put that down here as well. I remember because I was looking through my uh, inventory for things to... I can also put this down here because I'm not really going to use it. I was looking through my inventory for things to um, uh, wear because I didn't really know what to wear for this episode. And my bank was looking kind of uh, kind of populated with items, so I was figured, oh, well, maybe I'll wear you know something uh, th retro. Something throwback. Get it retro? <laughs> something throwback. We have a new mission from Blossom, as is probably customary. Home Invaders. I just received a report that gravel golems are preparing to attack my house in Pokyoke South. You need to stop them. Can you do it? Right. Yes, I can. Bye -bye. So we got to go to Pokyoke South. Um, I want to say it might be easier to... Uh, what's it called? It might have been easier to go in like scamper to Peach Creek and then head down to Pokyoke South, but I feel like just heading in a straight line is not even that bad of an idea either. What does Dexter say? Uh, I know Blossom can be a tough taskmaster, but I think you'll learn a lot from her. I've already seen your skills improve. Keep it up, Dexter. <laughs> Dexter! Oh, man. But yeah, uh, obviously, this seemed a bit different, when, like a bit different paced when we were kind of heading towards um, Double D's missions, just because we only got one mission to level, and we were also doing them in conjunction with the world missions at the time, so it didn't seem like a big, too big of a deal, but these kind of have you run around... Um, not to the fault of their own, obviously. They're designed for you to be doing them kind of at the same time as uh, as everybody else. Or at the same time as, um, as like, other world missions. So, since these this is the only mission we're doing, we're kind of just, like, going somewhere, running back to Blossom, going somewhere, running back to Blossom. And that's not really necessarily how it's, like, designed to be. It's just because we're doing them at level 36 instead of at level 6. <laughs> how it's intended to be. We get to come back to Pokeoaks. See the Powerpuff Girl's house, see how it's going, see how it's going. Um, it's taking us past the Powerpuff Girl house, though. I don't remember where it takes us to. Is it just the backyard? It looks like it's taking us all the way down here. I hope they know that Blossom lives there, and not anywhere down here. But, I guess this yard. Does it think that Blossom lives there, in Chris Waldron's house? Because that is not the case. Chris Waldron lives in Chris Waldron's house. You'll have to look for gravel golems nearby. Okay. Well, I did not have to look very far because they are swarming this backyard. I'm going to take out Eddie. Maybe I can do a bit more damage with this. I think. There we go. I do love the, the little suburban, uh, suburban backyards and stuff. I think they look very nice. The swing sets and the basketball courts and stuff. Okay, I need two more. I'm probably going to head back towards... Powerpuff Girl House, just so I can maybe save a little bit of time if I need to. I don't know if I need to. But here's one last Gravel Golem we will take out. I placed the enemies for Pokeyoke South, actually, which is kind of nice. Those creeps didn't stand a chance. Well, come back to me. I'm sensing a pattern, Blossom. <laughs> I'm sensing a pattern of us uh, going somewhere and then coming back to you. Anyway, uh, let's jump on the Powerpuff Girl's house. Let's see what's up here. Can I get up here? I don't think I can. I can probably alt jump. Yeah, there we go. I don't want to go all the way up to the top, but there's the Powerful Girl's house. Again, I wish it kind of had more of a more of a presence. Not to say there should be an NPC there or anything like that, but it just seems like it's kind of there. You know, I don't know what else. I don't have any good ideas for like how to fix that. You know, so I'm not trying to complain just to complain. Um, Obviously, I, I don't really like complaining about things unless I have, like, a proposed solution for them. And I don't really have one for that. Um, because I don't think putting an NPC there would be good. Because I don't, I can't think of any NPC that would go there that isn't already in the game, you know? And, like, I don't want to move anyone. Let's head on back to Blossom. Did Zexter send us anything? No, he didn't. I, I, I swear I heard the noise, but I might just be, like, I'm so used to hearing the noise that I just kind of hear it. When I, it's actually not there. You know how like sometimes that happens? Like when you're expecting your when you're expecting to get like a text or something, so you just you swear you hear your phone like vibrate. When it actually isn't doing it, you just kind of expect it to. So you check your phone and then no one texts you and then you're like, oh which is a very common problem for me because no one ever texts me. <laughs> I wish it was the case. <laughs> Let's head on over to Blossom. You can also climb up here, too, which is actually, this is one of the areas that I think is a lot harder to get to. 
um, without like a jump or a rocket if you're just trying to climb the treehouse. So that's kind of weird. Obviously, you can't climb the whole treehouse. It doesn't go up that high, but... Thanks for getting rid of those gravel golems. I wish I could be in 100 places at once, but that's just impossible. The professor says thanks, too. Awesome work. Excellent job. Dexter wants to reward you with his armor. And then hardware help. Let's see what Dexter says. I sent Blossom some information about a device that I believe may help us locate the missing superheroes. Go speak with her to get the details. I have to get back to my research. Of course you do. You have, uh... Okay, so we have, like, the whole dodgeball armor thing. What if I put on the helmet now? Now we got the whole set on. Now we look nice. We got the glasses, too, so we kind of do look like... Dexter a little bit. Do we anything cool in here? I don't think so. Double D found an alien device called a power level tracker. I've got a picture. Dever thing Dever. Dexter thinks you might be able to use it to locate the world's missing superheroes. When you talk to Double D, show him the schematic drawing of the power level tracker that Blossom gave you. That should help jog his memory, I hope. Okay, so we gotta go talk to Double D. I hope he's like, hey, why are you doing <laughs> Why are you doing missions for Dexter when you're supposed to be my guide -y? I don't know what the proper term would be. Because he's my guide, but am I his guide -y? Am I his student? I don't think student would be the call. Like, recruit, maybe? I don't know. Let's go talk to Double D. See if he remembers me. Hey, you were the one who saved the entire world. <laughs> saved his fuse from infecting all of our candy. Hardware health. Hey, what's up? Yes, I did indeed find a gizmo that resembles this picture, but some monster stole and disappeared into the park nearby. If Dexter wants it, you'll have to get it back. Okay, well, we gotta go fight some pain saws. Nothing too crazy about that. Pretty standard stuff. Let's go get a power level tracker back. Okay, that was just so much easier than I thought it would be. Cool, you gotta bring it back here. Let's see it for a moment. Okay, it was the first pain saw we fought. I'll take it. It is a broken power level tracker, though. So it looks like we're going to have to probably do something to repair it. Yes, this is the alien device that I found Eddie wanted to sell it. You have no idea how- I have no idea how it works. You should take it. Maybe Dexter can fix it. The tracker is broken? Well, bring it back here. Okay. So apparently there's something called a power level tracker. It tracks whether your nick level is over 9,000 or not. And uh, we need to- uh, I guess it makes sense because you gotta- If we're trying to find like superheroes- Right, they will obviously have a very high power level. So, maybe the power level tracker will be good in helping us find... It seems like the only hero that we need to find right now is Major Glory, and then as well as uh, Buttercup. Those are like the main two. Um, I don't actually remember the dialogue from most of these uh, guide missions, so I don't remember if it's like, is just those two or if there's more. Hey, thanks for recovering the power level tracker. I think this will really help us in our search for the missing heroes. Keep up the great work! Thanks, I'll hold on to the power level tracker for Dexter until we can figure out what to do with it. In the meantime, take this dodgeball cannon. I'm definitely going to use that. Because it's uh, it's better than the lightning gun. And <laughs> we just have a big ol' arm. Huh. <laughs> Stop. Halt. Hey, you're doing a great job out there. The power level tracker will be extremely useful. Why don't you go talk to Blossom and see if there's any missions you can help her with. You ready for a mission? Supplies party is the next one. The Candy Pirate Village is in a critical strategic location, right near the infected pirate ship. I need you to get some supplies to them from the cul-de-sac. Okay. Anytime. Let's do that as well. So we gotta go talk to Sticky Beard. I see you're back working for Blossom. Well, please keep it up while I think about this power level predicament. I know I can crack the problem given some time. Okay, so Dexter doesn't really know what to do with the power level tracker. Seems pretty straightforward to me. Um, superheroes have a high power level. <laughs> Use it. Well, I guess the, 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 the tricky thing is not using it, it is fixing it, because it is broken right now. So I guess I understand where Dexter's coming from. But let's go and talk to Sticky Beard. Honestly, we could take the monkey, but I honestly feel like it's Candy Cove is close enough where it, it's just faster to do this, and just climb over the cul-de-sac walls like so, and then just run straight to the Candy Pirate camp. It's not always the fastest to do this. Obviously, like, if I was going to Goat's Junkyard or something, I wouldn't do this, which I'm assuming we'll have to do eventually, because this is our level... This is technically a level 7 guide mission. And uh, we'll eventually have to do that around level, level 10. But um, since Candy Pirate Camp is, like, just so close to the cul-de-sac, it makes no sense to fly all the way there, so I can just kind of run. <laughs> oh, yeah, Woosh is here, too. I forgot about Woosh. Hello, Sticky Beard. 
Supplies party. Arg, we in trouble, matey. The monsters in the vicinity are making it difficult to get supplies from them boys in the cul-de-sac. Can ye help us? I can certainly help ye. Seems like these barrel bashers are giving you quite a problem, so I will do my best to uh, try to take these out with my new dodgeball cannon. <laughs> these are really cool. <laughs> I love it. And... This is a shatter gun too, so I can't take out multiple at once. The problem with barrel bashers is that they do not normally group up. These two might, if I kind of go like this with them. I love the fact that it's like just pretending like you have like a big ol' a big ol' hand. I'm gonna try to take out the big guy too. That seems kinda fun. There we go. Nice job. Now head over to Peach Creek and look for Eddie at the cul-de-sac. Oh, I have talked to Eddie plenty of times. I know exactly where to look. And again, the close sack is right here. So. The Candy Pirates need some more supplies. There was a whole mission. I guess this would make a lot more sense. Because there was like that whole mission earlier about like the Eds conning the Candy Pirates out of their jawbreakers and stuff. So I guess this might fit in really well with that. But obviously we, we did that one a long time ago. Oh, you're here for this box for the Pirates. They're running up quite a tab. Next time you better have some cash or no, es, no esta box aquí. Comprende? Again, Eddie speaking Spanish is just something that just is in this game for no reason. Great, take that, take that box to secure it right away. Success is critical. I know one of those words was quickly. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> I don't. I don't. And I know comprende. Comprende is is pretty self-explanatory. But um, I don't speak Spanish. I know. Last time I was trying to do Eduardo's voice, some people were like, were like, actually, it's these things. Like, I, I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't speak the language. I did not take Spanish classes. I took German classes when I was in, when I had the option to take a language. But we have some supplies. It's very vague what these supplies are. Does it say? Nope. <laughs> Just some generic supplies. Arr, I don't know how much longer we last without these bags of jelly beans. There they are. That's what it is. Without jelly beans, we have no energy for fighting fuses. Cronies, I owe you one. Are you there? Jelly beans? Jelly beans? Is he serious? We'll come back here. <laughs> Oh, uh, that's funny. See, there's some, there's some good, there's some, there's some gems in dialogue when you end up reading the dialogue. That's why I love doing it. Blossom is like jelly beans. You did all that work for jelly beans. I feel like that's like a reference to something, but I don't know what it is. <laughs> oh, I can't stop thinking about that. You just like, hey, here's a big, here's a big box of supplies. I don't know, are they? Is it like, is it like water? Is it like canteens? Is it like I don't know, tents, or or even like weapons, or ammo. Nope, jelly beans. I guess jelly beans could be used as ammo. I would not put it past the people who make these weapons to use uh, jelly beans as ammo. I'm honestly kind of surprised that that's not a thing. It might be. I know that the Gumzuka uses gumballs, but there might be like a jelly bean one too. Let's head back to Sector V. We gotta go talk to Blossom and see why, or see if she's uh, super uh, upset about these jelly beans. I would be. <laughs> I would be. I wouldn't be, actually, you know? I don't know why these, like, the candy pirates don't have energy. They're not gonna give you energy. I guess sugar would give you kind of energy, f but, like, normally when I eat sugar, a lot of sugar, I crash, like, really quickly afterwards. You ready for a supplies party. I can't believe those important supplies were bags of jelly beans. That reminds me, I could really use a candy bar right about now. You've come a long way since I first met you. I think you're ready for a critical mission. Oh, and take this reward for your trouble. Okay. Um, I have received reports that Fuse is gathering spies in the Eternal Meadows Cemetery. You better go talk to Blossom and see if she can help you take care of this. You ready for a mission? Okay. The graveyard is crawling with Fuse's spies. We need to take them out or they'll start figuring out our secrets. Can you go to Eternal Vistas? Great. I can. We also got a really cool um, blowfish buddy. I'm going to put him on my back now. Instead of the backpack, I have a little blowfish. Oh, he's so cute. <laughs> Look at him. Uh, Blossom really knows what she's doing. Without her, the suburbs would have fallen a fuse a long time ago. Keep helping her out, and I will send new information as soon as I receive it. Okay, so we gotta go to Eternal Vistas. Which is really nice, because we can actually get there rather quickly, because we have, uh, we have fast travel to Ennsville. Um, if you don't remember that one, because, uh, we've been there before. <laughs> but I always forget that Ennsville has a scamper. It always, uh, like, slips my mind. Because it's like one of the weirdest places to have a scamper. Out of all of them. But we can just kind of go there. 
We are here in Ennsville. I guess we're not really where we need to be because we have to go and travel to Eternal Vistas, but it's not it's not like it's very far. It's literally like right there. It's also kind of funny how Dexter's like, without Blossom, the suburbs would have fallen a fuse a long time ago. I feel like it's without me <laughs> the suburbs would have fallen a fuse a long time ago. I have done all the work. <laughs> I have gone out and fought all the monsters. Blossom has just told me what to do. But I can't I can't judge. Maybe Blossom, you know, has been going out and uh, and fighting, you know, when I'm not there or something. I can't judge. I don't know. I don't know her life story. So I'm going to do these spookas and stuff because it's the right here. Might as well. Because these are spies. I don't know how they'd be spies. They look pretty uh, conspicuous to me. Like, I kind of know what they are. They're spookas. There we go. Great, come back to me and I'll give you some more cool stuff. Okay. I guess we we, we cleared out the spy problem. They, they really didn't touch on that one very much. <laughs> it's just, hey, go fight some spookas. Oh, they're spies. I don't know how they're spies. Did it explain how they're spies? No. <laughs> I guess I could have read the other journal and figured it out, but I don't know. Again, they're, they're, they're very conspicuous. They're not very, uh, they're not very hidden. You know, normally when you think of a spy, you think of something that's disguised and hidden. Uh, those are spookas. I know that they're enemies. <laughs> they look like they're bad. The pumpkins would have made more sense, because they could just you could explain it like, oh, they're disguising themselves as regular pumpkins on the ground and spying on us or something. But, I don't know. Oh, we gotta go back to the scamper. I was kind of confused as to where I was supposed to go from here. Back to Sector V. It seems like it is a, um, that's a very common thing that we have to do, is go back to Sector V. And let's go talk to Blossom again. I think we're starting the Dynamo set now, the, but the Blossom Dynamo set, which is kind of cool, um, because you can get the, oh, the Bunny Dynamo set was for Easter, and then you can get the Bubbles and the Bl Buttercup Dynamo set, I think, normally. Uh, the Buttercup Dynamo set might be another guide mission, but I know the Bubbles one you can just get. Um, but the, the Dynamo sets are super nice. Good work. We cannot allow Fuse to get his hands on any of our top secret secrets. <laughs> you did great. Now I have a personal favor to ask. Awesome Thanks for clearing out those monsters. You did a fantastic job. Would you like these red Dynamo boots? I don't wear them very often. Hey, uh, of course I would, because the Blossom Dynamo set is a very cool set. And the next mission is called Remember Buttercup. Has Blossom mentioned the disappearance of her sister Buttercup? I still wonder if Buttercup's fate is somehow related to her disappearances about the other heroes. You should go ask her about it. Be gentle. She's still very emotional. I'd be too if I lost my sister. So, Not too long ago, my sister Buttercup disappeared after a fight with Mojo. I think you should ask the professor about it. It's just too painful to me. Would you do that? Okay, so we gotta go talk to Professor Utonium. Uh, we gotta go to Genius Grove for this one. That's kind of sad. I don't remember if this was one of the ones. So we changed. Um, we didn't change, but we, we edited the dialogue on a lot of the Belladonna missions. These are all um, low-level things, so I don't really need to keep these. But we edited the um, mission dialogue on a lot of the, the Belladonna um, quest lines because uh, a lot of the dialogue that was in the game did not me mention Belladonna at all. They normally just already referred to as Buttercup, and that kind of ruins the suspense of her being Buttercup. So we fixed up a couple things. I don't remember if this is one of the ones that were fixed up. I don't believe so. I think it was just like I'm still standing, and um, like the nano enhancement ones, and like uh, fusion from another planet. Oh, excuse me, fusion from another planet. But uh, this one might have been too. Um, I don't think so because I don't think we actually talked to Buttercup in this uh, mission because it's level nine and Buttercup is. In a bit higher level than that, but... Um, what does Dexter also say? So, Blossom told you about Buttercup? Yes, that was very tragic. The girls were fighting Mojo Jojo off the southern coast when Buttercup was shot down and fell into the sea. No one has seen her since. I am not sure if it has anything to do with Fuse or the missing heroes. You should talk to the professor. Um, I don't believe it has anything to do with Fuse, actually. I'm going to answer that question already because I think I know. I think I'm 99% sure that the... Obviously, like... In, I, I know this for a fact in like Legacy because I've we've written that, but like I'm pretty sure even in the original, um, the Buttercup fight where Buttercup gets uh, like she quote unquote dies. Of course, you can't see me air quoting, um, but where she gets knocked in the ocean and loses her memory and everything. I believe that always that like has always happened before the Fuse invasion. 
but I might be wrong about that. In, at least in Retro. In Legacy, it absolutely happens before the Fees Invasion. That's something that happens like before the world's invaded. Ah, my buttercup. I'm still trying to cope with this loss. I'm surprised Blossom mentioned it to you. She never talks about it with me. That reminds me. I'm wondering if you would do me a favor. We gotta go to Eternal Meadows. Which, we can't actually get there from here. Because, for some reason, there's no um, monkey from Genius Grove to Eternal Meadows. What do we actually have to do? Oh, I think he was supposed to, his dialogue was supposed to update, but he basically says, Monsters from Ensville took one of Buttercup's scrapbooks and disappeared inside the graveyard. Can you please get it back for me? It's one of the only things that I still have that belong to her. Please be careful out there, it's dangerous. What did the professor have to say about Buttercup? He was searching, he was searching for her desperately but never found her. I wonder what's in the graveyard, go find out. Okay, so we gotta go to the graveyard. And find a sketchbook. That, uh, apparently was Buttercup's, but it got stolen by some creepy fuge guys. I'm assuming they used it to make a fusion buttercup or something like that, potentially. I know that that is, that is not her, like, nano creation item or whatever, which is, I think, technically what they used to create a fusion buttercup, but they used, they used, there, there's plenty of fusions. I like how we can kind of just go through the slider as well. That's always fun. <laughs> it makes sense how this doesn't, like, knock you off, because it is, like, if you're running on the thing, you, you would just kind of get, like, booted off by the slider, but... Let's go to the graveyard. Hoo hoo hoo. <laughs> it's very spooky in here. I always used to be very scared to run through the graveyard because I was very scared of it as a kid. So I never went to Eternal Meadows when I was supposed to. I would always skip it and go straight to Ensville, which is also kind of scary. But like, I, I always felt really scared going through the graveyard, I remember. I don't know, as a kid. I don't remember why. I guess it is like a spooky place, but I always used to... I, I remember I, I, was, I was so afraid to run through the graveyard that I I never did until I like, absolutely had to. Be careful, the graveyard is scary and badly infected. Are there baddie bloodsuckers outside? I believe they're around the back, but I'm still going to go in the infected zone anyway. If I want to go get some baddie bloodsuckers, uh, you got to go to the back of the infected zone if I remember correctly. I forgot I had number two for a second. And the pumpkin guys still want to try to throw things at me. I am the master weapon. I am the hero. <laughs> you can't harm me. You do like no damage and then I'll just heal it up with Eddie anyway. I am just going to jump down here. Because it's not like... Um, it's not like it's going to be too detrimental to my, uh, my health bar. Again, I'm not too worried because I have Eddie with me. Let's go fight some bloodsuckers. Okay, that was again super... I don't know why these are all... Does the chance- I don't know if this is true or not. Does the chance of you getting an item depend on your level difference as well? Oh, I'm so glad you found it. Please bring it back here as soon as you can. Because we have found the first two times that we've had to get an item, we've both gotten them first try. And they've been on lower level enemies compared to what we currently are. So I'm not sure if that is the case or not. I guess it kind of makes sense. If that's how combat works, but... I don't know for a fact. Um, so we have to go bring that to Utonia. If we had to bring it to Blossom, I would, uh, I would have gone... A bit of a different way. Here are the urban rangers crying. That is not Rolf's grave. That is a popular theory. I think I've talked about that when I was here earlier, but that is... A lot of people uh, theorize that that grave is Rolf. It is not Rolf's grave. Um, it is, I believe, the the um, the correct thing is that it's just, like, a urban ranger. Like, that they, they really, like, I don't know. Like a generic urban ranger. It wasn't, like, a named character or anything. That was, a. Uh, that is what it was, like, intended to be. But they obviously, like, you can't read what's on the grave or anything, so it was never really, like, um, it was never really stated. Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if it was supposed to be a quest for a while, and then they just switched it, because they'd be like, why would a bunch of urban rangers be crying over a quest? But that would not surprise me in the slightest, if that was, like, supposed to be that. But we have... A little scrapbook. Let's give this to the professor. It's so hard not knowing what happened to Buttercup. You know this scrapbook should really go to Blossom. Will you bring it to her? Aww. That's really cute. <laughs> that is that is actually kind of heartwarming. Because uh, obviously Blossom's super torn up about the whole Buttercup thing. So he's like, you know, he should give this to Blossom instead. I don't need it. Professor you time is a great dad. <laughs> Oh well. Uh, let's head on over. I don't think we have an email or anything, or um, anything to open. 
when you're done with the professor, please come back and see me. Oh, so we get the, the dynamo legs. Um, I think this will probably be the last mission of this part because it is getting kind of long. It's 40 something minutes right now. And also my throat is killing me. <laughs> I've been talking for so long. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rest my voice a little bit and then probably record um, another one after this where I go through the remaining uh, Blossom, uh, nano, not nano missions, guide missions. Um, let's see what we've done. I'll check them off. We've done all of these up until this one is currently Remember Buttercup. So you've done the first 10. I guess not first 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. We've done the first 9. <laughs> and then uh, we have to go to the nuke plant. And we have to go do some other things. It'll be all fun and games. And then we'll be moving on to downtown and stuff like that. But let's go give the script real quick. I think this is a really nice way to end the episode too, because uh, uh, the dialogue in this part, or the the dialogue in Remember Buttercup, is one of the cutest I think in in the in the whole thing. It really touches, really tugs on the old heartstrings when Utonium tells you to give it to Blossom instead. All right, Blossom, I have a surprise for you. Thank you for bringing me Buttercup's scrapbook. I'm still in shock. I wonder if there's any connection between Buttercup and the other missing heroes. I don't think so. <laughs> Is this one of Buttercup's scrapbooks? I don't know if I'm ready to read it, but I'm grateful to have it. Take this equipment for, with my thanks. Let me know if you learn more about her disappearances. Okay, so we got the uh, dynamo legs, which are a bit slimmer and more robotic than ours. So we look a bit top-heavy right now, but I promise we'll fix that when we go through some more missions. But that's going to be our part today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you guys did enjoy, um, leaving a like on this series would be great. I would really, really appreciate it. Uh, go through the playlist as well um, and watch... Uh, some of the earlier episodes that kind of take place in Sector V and, and the other areas that we visited today. And maybe uh, remember the journey that we went on together. Um, also, if you guys have comments, uh, any feedback for the series, any feedback for any uh, other videos that I do. Also, if you guys want to pick some nanos that I can use for future parts, go ahead and do those. I have all 36 nanos. So pick your favorite three nanos, put them in the comments, and I will pick my favorite ones and use them in a future part. Um, also, one last thing, if you guys want to hit the subscribe button, I would really, truly appreciate it. We are so close to 6k, so if we can hit that, that would be amazing. Um, as well as if you ring the notification bell and you tell me in the comments below, then I will, um, give you a shout out in a future part. Yeah, that's awesome. So, thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys, uh, I'll see you guys next time with some more Dexter Guide missions, some more Fusion Ball Retro, and some more Adventure Fun. Alright guys, peace.